I dropped out of school because my schooling was interfering with my education. It is clear to the world that something just isn't working with institutional education. And most people say that this means we need to change institutional education. But to the educators of the world, I am here today to say that I disagree. You don't need to change anything. You simply need to understand that the world is changing. And if you don't change with it, the world will decide that it doesn't need you anymore. Until next time, I am Dan Brown. Dan, I have a reputation for being a particularly humorless bastard when it comes to people badmouthing science, knowledge, and education. And as such, when someone like yourself gets up in front of their 200 or so thousand subscribers and says, I dropped out of school because my schooling was interfering with my education, you're damn straight that's going to get a response. Now let me ask you a question, Dan. Why is it, why do you think it is, that so few times that society looked to the college dropout for visionary insight as to ways we can make things better in the future, say for instance with the education system? Why do you think that is? Well, let me see if I can actually help you out a bit here by, and I, I want you to do this by contrasting the view of someone who didn't drop out of college, say for instance like myself, with the way that you view the problem, someone who did drop out of college. But let's start on a point of universal agreement, like this. To succeed as a planet in the 21st century, a strong education for every human being isn't just important, it is essential. Bravo, Dan. Couldn't agree with you more. But you see, for an argument to be convincing, for an argument to be compelling, an argument must be cohesive, it must contain concise concepts. It must not contain diametrically opposed, internally inconsistent components. Like this. But to the educators of the world, I am here today to say that I disagree. You don't need to change anything. You simply need to understand that the world is changing, and if you don't change with it, the world will decide that it doesn't need you anymore. <laughs> ah, Dan Proposition 1. Education is the most important thing in the world. There's no possible way we could live without it. Dan Proposition 2. Eh, if the educators don't do what I want, eh, we can live without them. The world doesn't need them. Now, are you starting to see, Dan, why we don't look to college dropouts for visionary insight in the way to run society in the future? But let's move on. Let me speak from my own experience. I was a student at the University of Nebraska, and most of my classes went something like this. On the first day, I'd show up, and there would be a lecture hall full of 40 to 200 kids and just one professor. Professors rarely made an effort to learn anyone's names and almost never encouraged any sort of interaction amongst the students. Oh, did Dan go to university on the assumption that it was expensive daycare instead of, say, for instance, a center of learning? Yeah, Dan, that's the way that it works at universities. One lecturer, lots of students, such that one lecturer can teach lots of students. He's not there to organise your social calendar. And really, if having someone learn your name is that important to you, get a parrot. OK, Dan, I get it. You've got some sort of beef with the uh, university education system. And you think, through some mechanism that you don't describe, it's going to be improved somehow in the future. Well, in order to understand how you can improve things in the future, you must first of all understand how they work in the present. Well, universities serve three roles. One, they do research, they discover the unknown. Right? Two, they educate people to discover the unknown. This is the next generation of research scientists. These are the PhDs. Right? And then they educate people to an undergraduate level, and these are people who then go out into industry and into society and perform the skilled jobs. Right? So these are whatever the chemists, civil engineers, chemical engineers, biochemists, and so on. These are people who are needed by industry. That's what's driving it. Now let's compare what universities actually do 
to what Dan thinks they do. Classes would drag on for an hour, and all they would consist of was the professor in the front with a PowerPoint telling us facts. We'd frantically scribble down those facts, test time would come around and we would memorize our scribblings, we'd take the test, and we would receive a grade based on how many facts we memorized. But society no longer cares how many facts we can memorize, because in the information age, facts are free. And this is why you're a moron, Dan. This is an undergraduate physics textbook. Most people who get an undergraduate degree in physics will have a reasonable knowledge of what's in a book like this. Yet I can give you access to all of the information in this book. You can have access to the internet. All of the facts that you want, you can have access to. And I can give the undergraduate a physics problem, and I can give you a physics problem. They'll be able to solve it in about 15 minutes. I would be surprised if you can solve it in 15 months. Right? Just having a physics textbook doesn't make you a physicist. It is your knowledge of what's in the book and your ability to apply that knowledge that makes you useful to society. And your idea that, well, facts are free, you can get them on Google, is bollocks. And if you don't believe me, you try and get a job as, say, a civil engineer and say, well, I don't know anything about physics or structural mechanics or anything, but I know I can get the information somewhere on Google. See how far that gets you. Or even better, try getting a job as a medical doctor. You know, I don't know anything about operations or cutting people open or diagnosing things or anything like that. But the information is available online. Therefore, yeah, the facts are free. Why not give me a job? It's bollocks, Dan. You know it. Any educational institution based solely on providing students with facts is not preparing students for the real world. Yeah, but Dan, the only place that universities like that exist is in your mind. And if you'd have stuck around long enough at university instead of dropping out, you might have actually realized that. See, in the noble quest to provide education to the masses, we have lost sight of what education really is. No, we have not lost sight of what education is. It's just that you never had a clear concept of what it was in the first place. I hope that now you're a little clearer on why we don't look to the college dropout, to the guy who says, I dropped out of school because it was getting in the way of my education to the guy who doesn't even have a clear idea of what education is, why we don't look to people like this for suggestions of how we could improve the education system in the future. But society no longer cares how many facts we can memorize because in the information age, facts are free.